Hey everybody, Nick here, and this morning I got a disassembly video for you on this guy. This is the Ontario Rat number one in D2 Steel. So, um, I actually already filmed the assembly video for this guy, but, uh, lost the video because, well, hashtag not a brilliant man. So rather than doing the entire disassembly again, what I'm gonna do is just show you the basics. Um, on the last time I actually, well, I'll start taking it apart anyways. So here we go, pop these out. And so all I'm doing here is popping out the handle screws. But I'll show you basically what's going on there and let you do the, uh, the, the back side basically yourself because there's nothing really different about it. I do want to apologize for the state of my hands. I think one of the chemicals or something I'm using at work isn't agreeing with me and causing some irritation. I know it's ugly. But alas, I am not set out in this life to be a hand model. I will just have to be a YouTube personality and a damn good Nick otherwise. At least I'll do my best. But alrighty. So, um, I've already popped out the handle screws, now you can see, and that was using a Torx T6 sort of bit. Now I'm going to move to the pivot, which requires a Torx T9. Pop the pivot out here for you. And go ahead, pull the blade out, and lift. And it's that simple. So, you can see here, this is fairly clean, and in fact, I have recently frog lubed the inner scale here. So there's nothing really to do there, cleaning-wise. One interesting thing about this knife is that it's using a two-washer arrangement. What you have here is a Teflon, well, sheet, a micro-thin sheet. I mean, seriously, look at the thinness of that guy, holy crap. On top of a bronze washer, and the Teflon side is up against the blade. So, set that there, and again, all of this is relatively clean, because I just did it. And then on the other side here, we've got the... Uh, washer and the Teflon. There we go. Everything's lubricated. Perhaps even a little too much. I'll calm it down in there. Um, and so this lets me just look at the interior of the knife here. There's not that much interesting in here. Um, you can see here that there are standoffs. And one interesting fact about this knife here, I'll take one of them off there so you can see that, is that the standoffs are actually not symmetrical. When you pop one of these guys off, you'll notice, and this messes with you a little bit first time, but you'll notice that on this side, the standoff here is completely round. But on this side, the standoff has a D-shape cut out to it. It's got a flat side. And that fits into only one side of the liner. This side has a D-shape in the liner itself. Hopefully you can see. And so as you're putting the standoffs back in, if you disassemble the other side, and it's a good idea to, generally, because that way you can protect the back of the liner here. Um, as well as clean out under there, you're going to need to make sure that the standoffs go in in the right direction, because otherwise you're going to have a bad time. You're going to put them in and they'll go in fine on this side, but then the other side won't go in and you'll be just in a world of pain. And that's not a world I want to see you in, my loyal viewers. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cover the... Use a little bit of the excess there. And then hit the interior of the standoff, and that's actually a brilliant thing and kind of a, an integrity move by the uh, Ontario folks because that means that the pivot, I'm sorry, the, the back spaces here can't uh, spin freely. So you can actually torque the back spacer together without having to hold on to it with like pliers or something. That's actually one of the bigger issues that the paramilitary do, the Spydeco uh, PM2 has in that the uh, the washers, I'm sorry, the back spaces are free spinning, so you really do have to hold on to it with some pliers. So I like that very much. Um, to remove this scale, then all you really need to do is pull these guys here, and then pull the pocket clip, and it just pops apart. I'm not gonna do that. Um, here we see we've got our pivot, and actually the pivot is, uh, basically it's screwed in here as well, and again, it's D-shaped on this side. And again, you've got your washers in the normal configuration and the washers slip onto here. So there you go. One other thing I'll point out, and this is kind of characteristic of Ontario, is that on the inside here, we do have some metal defects. Like for instance, right here, that's just not brilliant. There's kind of a scratch there, or right over here, there's a scratch. And, but the thing is, they're not in the areas that count. Um, this one might maybe influence the washer slightly, but by and large, it's not a problem. It's not perfection in the way that I would expect from a 50, uh, some, sorry, from a uh, $500 sort of knife, but it is, you know, just fine here. 
Uh, considering what you're getting, I can't really argue too much. So I'm gonna put things back together. Again, I got the Teflon washer facing that, and this is already lubricated, but all I did was put a drop of lube behind the washer and a drop of lube on top of the Teflon. Now I'm setting the blade down on top of there. I also will always lubricate a little bit the detent ball path so it slides freely. Now this is the only tricky part of reassembling, or disassembling for that matter, this knife. I'm gonna drop the washer on here but the important thing to remember is that the washer, well, here, let me see if I can show you this up close. The washer is actually bigger than the space around the pivot because the pivot is wider than the part that goes into the, um, into the scales here. And so if you just put the washer on and it gets, well, there, into a position like this, uh, you will not be able to actually tighten the pivot of the knife. The action will be terrible and you'll have yourself a bad time. So what you need to make sure is that the washer is actually centered around the pivot here. So that when you actually do tighten this down, the washer is able to pop up uh, over the, the inside of the pivot there. And so it's a little bit fiddly, I'll be honest with you there. But once you get it there, yeah, okay. So it looks like I'm in that position, so I'm very quickly gonna drop the scale down onto this. There we go. And now I'm gonna tighten the pivot screw very first thing. I already Loctited it a little bit earlier, so that's not a problem. This knife is not very difficult to disassemble at all. There we go, got everything. Let's go ahead. One good way to check to see if that's your problem, and I'm probably not gonna be able to show this on camera, but you can actually look through here and see the bronze of both washers, and they should be perfectly aligned. Like the end of the bronze should be the same on this side as on this side. And so, right now it's a little bit overly tight, but that's okay, I'll leave it that way for the moment. Now I just gotta drop in the rest of the back spaces. But anyways, as I was saying, this knife is not very hard to disassemble or reassemble in any way. Um, it's pretty straightforwardly built and made, the only little fiddly part being, of course, that little pivot trick that I showed you there. Um, everything else is pretty easy. And so it's time consuming because you have all these damn backspaces here, but that again leads to some strength and rigidity for it. So I can't get too bent out of shape remotely here. I feel like that's now sufficiently Loctited. Let's go ahead and drop this in here. Go back to my smaller pivot, ah, uh, not pivot, backspacer screws. And put this in here. Beautiful. And the next one. Because if you're doing all five backspacer screws on each side along with the handle, it takes a little bit of time. There's no trick to it. That simplicity, the bare bonesness of it, the fact that it's not trying to do that much, but it's doing it very well, is one of the reasons I like this and its little brother, the Rat 2, just so damn much. The Rat 2, by the way, is pretty much identical in construction. And that's just a beautiful thing. It's a knife that anybody can take apart, even if this is your very first knife that you're taking apart, this guy is a really great way to learn. There's not that much that can go wrong, not that much you can do to screw it up. And if you manage to light it on fire somehow in the process, guess what? You're out. 25, 30 bucks. No biggie. Alrighty, so this is all put back together. Centering's good. Pivot is still too tight, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that up a little bit. No big, big deal. we go. Oh man, yes. Another way that you can tell if you're trapped on the washer is that you'll have some pretty substantial blade play going on. But right now, this is smooth with absolutely zero in the way of blade play. There we go. Beautiful. That's how you disassemble and maintain your rat too. Uh, I'm sorry, your rat number one, that is. Um, like I said, not much to it. Uh, no secret tricks, no fancy nothing really. It's just a great knife. Um, this review is gonna go live on a Thursday. 
I'm sorry, this uh, this video is going live actually tomorrow, and uh, the review is going to go live on the Saturday. And in fact, I've decided I'm going to do that, for those of you who are regular watchers, I'm going to do that pretty regularly coming up here, because uh, the disassembly videos, I'm feeling like, actually give a good perspective on the knife uh, that you might not just get from the review. So I'm going to see if I can't get it more often to be the case that you get a disassembly video, then a couple of days later you get the full review. That way you see both the inside and the out. Of course, there are knives that can't be disassembled for whatever reason, and they'll go individually, but anyways, that's what's on the plan. Rat 1, D2 steel. Oh, didn't quite get that time. Could even loosen this up a little further, but that's okay. Hope this has been interesting, and uh, make sure to take care of your D2. Uh, a little bit of frog lube on the blade goes a long way, just because it is a very rust-prone steel. And, uh, yeah, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day.